Could the F-35 be rendered useless by a drone swarm? That's the question that's literally on every military strategic planner's mind. And today I'm diving into that subject. We're going to talk about what strategies the F-35 could use to protect itself from a drone swarm. What types of drone swarms are out there and how do these things operate? Is there anything that can actually counter them in an effective way? But as the time of this video coming out, Elon Musk has a post on X that says, crude aircraft will be destroyed instantly by cheap drone swarms. And I understand what he's getting at. I believe there will be a time in the future where the F-35 could absolutely be taken down by a drone swarm. But right now, in this moment, the F-35, once it gets past a certain altitude and it's not vulnerable anymore, I don't think there's any drone swarm that can touch it. At least none that I know of. Who knows? Maybe he knows of some that we don't. But let's talk about the current drone swarm tech that we know about and where the F-35 is most vulnerable and what is likely being done to counter this drone threat. And the thing I really love about this is the technology that we're gonna talk about today, this counter drone technology that's being potentially used right now to protect carriers like the Harry S. Truman, the Carl S. Venson that are operating in the Persian Gulf. This same exact technology could be used in civilian forms as well. Think protecting a football stadium. And we're gonna get into some of the companies that are doing that. But first of all, the F-35 itself, the F-35, could this thing actually be loaded up with some sort of weapon that protects it from drones? We're going to dive into that as well. And then keep in mind, this is just my opinion. As a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, I'll be breaking down what I think the future holds for the F-35, for the F-22, and hey, even the beautiful F-47 that is set to roll out. Who knows? Shortly, hopefully shortly. I would love for it to roll out shortly. I, if they need a test pilot, let me know. So first of all, let's just talk about the types of drones that might be trying to counter the F-35. So we've seen China, we've seen Russia release lots of different bigger drones that are able to carry a payload. That's really not what we're going to discuss today. Because an aircraft like that, while you might argue something like that could be a missile truck, could get up to altitude and launch a missile at an F-35. This really isn't the type of drone swarm I wanna focus on because a lot of these would be planked off by F-22s and F-35s well prior to the merge. We're talking 50 miles plus, likely. So I don't wanna talk about those drones today. Today I wanna talk about those little ones, those little B or bigger drones, slightly bigger, that basically come in like a big swarm and try to take down an F-35. So let's talk about the F-35 tactics and strategies that they're operating with right now in the Persian Gulf. So at the time of this video being released in the Persian Gulf, F-35Cs are launching off the Carl Vinson and the Harry Truman. They're flying sorties against the Houthi rebels and deterrence against Iran every single day. So these are countering drones. I have to believe that they are countering drones. Recent pictures have shown the F-35 with its wings folded up and an AIM-9X that looks like it's essentially ready to just blast off. So as soon as they need this thing, it's like it's sitting reserve. And the AIM-9X to me would be the primary missile that you would use against drones. So this to me would go up against a bigger drone. The F-35, knowing that it might be susceptible to smaller drones close in, if you get it up to altitude, you get it off that carrier, now those AIM-9Xs are gonna lay waste to any type of cruise missile sized drones that might be coming after the carrier as they kind of establish that outer wall and set up a defensive counter air, a DCA net around that carrier strike group. But then let's talk about where is the F-35 actually vulnerable? So if Elon Musk is correct that the F-35 can be taken out by a swarm of cheap drones, they actually have to get to the F-35 first, right? So they have to get through this massive net of the Navy, so you've got outer rings, which are usually comprised by fourth generation, fifth generation fighters that will be taking down drones, cruise missiles, things of that nature. And then you've got destroyers that have SM2s, Sea Sparrows, and other advanced weapons that they could launch against slightly bigger drones. And those destroyers, as well as the Carl Vinson, have a gun, a beautiful gun, 20 millimeter and 30 millimeter Sea Whiz guns. The first one is a Phalanx Sea Whiz, and that's a 20 millimeter gun, radar guided, and this thing is a drone slayer. So this could definitely target drones that are the size of a football, maybe even a little bit smaller. But when it comes to the precision of targeting swarms of these smaller drones, these Sea Whiz guns are gonna be involved of keeping that from even getting to the F-35 in the first place. And then second is the Goalkeeper Sea Whiz system. That is a 30 millimeter weapon. So you got a lot more bang for your buck on that one. It's got the same caliber gun that the A-10 has. So one of these rounds, through a medium-sized drone and it's all over. But we're talking kinetic. So we're talking about kinetic solutions, which sometimes that's the best solution. But what I really wanna hone in on now that could protect that F-35 is an even better net, in my opinion. This is a middle to inner net that could protect the F-35 
from the drone swarm. And when I look at the F-35s in general, which F-35 would be most susceptible to a drone swarm? You got to think low tech. What is the enemy going to try to do? If they can just get a small drone down the intake of an F-35, you're going to take that thing down likely, especially the F-35B. So I believe the F-35B is likely the most vulnerable F-35 when it comes to drone swarms. So this one, when it's coming into land and it's hovering and it's doing that landing, that might be when it is at its most vulnerable point. It does a short field takeoff which is gonna be a similar type of vulnerability to the F-35C, which is basically gonna do that catapult launch off the carrier. At the end of the day, the F-35 is most vulnerable in game, inside. So we talked about the Sea Wiz guns, talked about the big guns, the SM2s on the outer rings. We talked about the even bigger guns, in my opinion, the F-35s themselves that are out there doing defensive counter air and the F-18s doing the same. But now let's talk about that middle to internet. Let's talk about the Leonidas, a high powered microwave system. See, I told you that you wouldn't be expecting this. The Defense Innovation Unit has been working on kinetic options for anti-drone technology like the Sea Wiz, like some smaller rockets, Basically creating a version of the Iron Dome that Israel has or the Golden Dome that's been talked about for other nations. That's more of a kinetic solution. But this HPM, this high-powered microwave weapon, is one that we haven't really heard of a lot before. So I want you to check this thing out and look at the way that it takes down drones. The Leonidas emits an electromagnetic pulse beam that disrupts the electronics of drones, disabling them mid-flight. And as you can see, this thing's a beast. It can literally take down multiple drones with that directed energy weapon. So think about this being on the carrier strike group. Think of this being that Leonidas, that Spartan from 300 protecting the F-35 as it's getting ready for takeoff. Because as soon as the F-35 gets up to 1200 miles an hour plus, it's loaded down with its AMRAMs, it's up high, you know, it's 50,000 feet plus. There aren't any drones that I know of, who knows, could be something I don't, that could touch it as far as a drone swarm goes. A lot of these drone swarms are operating basically in the shoot me, kill me zone of the Leonidas. So having this high powered weapon system that's right there, sitting there on the carrier as the protector of the F-35 for now, until the drone swarm technology advances and then we have to counter it in some other way, but at the, this point right now, being able to counter it with Leonidas, being able to get those F-35s up and airborne so they're not vulnerable, at least to the modern day drone swarms that we know about, now we're in a situation where the F-35s are lethal, we're not losing assets, and no one wants to lose that $70 million plus F-35. At the end of the day, that is a taxpayer asset. So having Leonidas there with that spear, that microwave spear just makes me happy. So the Leonidas is actually specifically designed for counter drone swarms. It can target and disable multiple drones simultaneously, making it effective against those drone swarms. The system utilizes high powered microwaves to deliver the EMP beam. Leonidas is designed to be portable and scalable with various versions available for different mission requirements, including the Leonidas Expeditionary designed for mobile forces. So think of the Expeditionary being on a convoy or being on a carrier strike group or wink wink being on an f-35 itself so what if the new f-47 is the test bed for this leonidas being embedded inside of the f-47 itself it flies over the battlefield like an archangel and just wipes out all the enemy drones there's so much possibility here so when it comes to protecting the f-35 i think there's different things we need to think about and that is having the leonidas on the carrier Having the Leonidas in four deployed positions of so an F-35B is taking off from a four deployed position. Have the Leonidas there with it so it can take down any drones that are trying to take down that F-35B as it does its short field takeoff and its vertical landing. And then if you think about the aircraft themselves, now you've got the F-35 itself adapted to carry a version of the Leonidas or the F-47 up above carrying the Leonidas. I mean, there's so much possibility here. The thing that's really cool about this microwave weapon is it uses non-kinetic energy. It means it doesn't rely on physical projectiles or explosive to disable drones. So you know what that means, right? It's like you've got an endless clip. If you've got an endless clip and you can just keep pecking off these drones, at the end of the day, you're the eagle that everybody wants to hang out next to. You're the one that everybody wants at the party because no drones are going to come in and ruin the party. So even though Elon said that crewed aircraft will be taken down by cheap drone swarms, I understand what he's saying. But I think what he's really doing that's really awesome is he's helping push the ball forward for companies like Epirus to design something like this high-powered microwave system. We need this. We've got to have something like this. And there's so many adaptations of this that can be used in the civilian world as well. Imagine protecting an entire stadium 
from drones, from terrorists trying to use drones. There's so much possibility there. It makes me feel better. I would much rather be at a Taylor Swift concert with that technology, I mean, a Riley Green concert with that technology up above me protecting us and not having it. So I think it's awesome that this system is out there. Again, so many applications to protect fighter jets, also so many applications to protect civilian events as well. And then I just gotta give a shout out to the fixed wing assets that can defend against drone swarms as well. And then, you know, I gotta give love to that growler as well, the EA-18G growler. Think of that thing out there on that outer ring protecting the carrier strike group, protecting these F-35 from any drone swarms even getting close. It could also be protecting inwards. So if these drone swarms are actually coming from the ocean, coming up out of the ocean, then it could turn inward and jam the signal going to these drones as well, effectively rendering them stupid. And then there's the EC-130H compass call. This is a jamming C-130 from the US Air Force. This thing could literally drive down roads in Afghanistan and ignite IEDs, improvised explosive devices that are using cell phone signals. This is a massive jammer as well. So having this up operating around Air Force bases, protecting from drone swarms, because that signal that they're going to get from a massive drone swarm, trying to talk to each other and operate together, even though it might be autonomously operating with AI, it's going to be something that the Compass Call can likely pick up on and disable. So again, you've got these fixed wing assets, and then we move in systems like the Lee Unitas that just burn these drones out of the sky, even better than directed energy lasers, in my opinion. Seeing these microwave defense systems at work, I think we've got a lot of opportunity ahead of us. Protection for the F-35 exists. So the F-35 can keep doing its mission. It can keep doing its high altitude stealth strikes, like what we saw Israel use it for, like what we're using it for against the Houthi rebels striking down their drones, what it could be used for against Iran. These drone swarms right now, I don't think they can hold a flame to the F-35 and the technology that could be protecting it. Is it vulnerable? Sure. But you have to protect fighter jets, just like a fighter jet has to protect a high value asset like a tanker or an AWACS, one of those big jets that has the radar on top. You've got to protect your assets now that are fighter jets from drone swarms. So again, it's layers of protection, making sure you have backups. These Lee United systems, you look and you see what drones have been doing in Ukraine. They've been taking out tanks. Tank warfare has forever changed, but I think we're still at a point where fighter aviation still has a strong place, especially fighter jets that have autonomous drones that are linked to it. So I don't think we're quite at the level of making tank warfare completely irrelevant, we're not making that type of irrelevancy in the fighter world yet. Drones are not doing that quite yet. Could they in the future? Absolutely. And I think that's what Elon Musk is driving us towards. I mean, he's trying to take us to Mars as well. So of course he's projecting forward and thinking about the next steps, which I love. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Turns out only 11.3% of you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, dominate the like button, share this channel with friends. And most of all, watch another video that'll pop up over here. That's pretty much the best compliment you can give me. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.